Hi, it's Dwyer. Sunday morning, June the 17th, 2018. Let's talk about Errol Spence against Ocampo. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I know right now, I know right now that um, Errol Spence's profile is very, very high. I understand right now many of you are reading about Errol Spence's destruction in one round of Ocampo, a previously unbeaten fighter. Okay, great. Great. I know this video is going to get me in trouble. Let me just say that to the extent that this video increases the odds on Errol Spence and makes future opponents such as Terence Crawford uh, to be viewed as longer shots, in other words, bigger underdogs, then I say great because the holes in Errol Spence's game come through in this first round video. First, let me just say this. Errol Spence has no slow gear, right? There are no slow rounds. In other words, he comes out, Ocampo comes in, Spence is not defensively blessed. You know that because in this first round, right, in the just a shade under three minutes of this fight, Ocampo lands some body shots on Errol Spence. I'm talking about big body shots on Errol Spence. By the way, I didn't say body shot. I'm saying body shots. In other words, in the first round, his opponent has figured out the distance between the two guys and his opponent's landing big body shots on Errol Spence. Now, Errol Spence, in response, is on his front foot, not his back foot. You don't see a lot of back foot here. Right? You really don't see Errol Spence making defensive adjustments. Right? Put another way, Errol Spence is not defensively blessed. Right? Ocampo is able to land some body shots on Spence in the very first round. And it's noteworthy because, of course, there's very little feeling out, period. Keep in mind, Spence is a southpaw. Ocampo is a righty. You would have expected the guys in the first round to kind of like be a little bit tentative. No, they get right down to business here. And after Spence gets hit with some body shots, Spence comes forward. What would have happened if Ocampo would have come forward? If Ocampo, instead of going back, would have said, Errol, walk into my shoulder. Right? If Ocampo, if Ocampo was, let's say, Gassiev, right, the cruiserweight, all Gassiev would have learned from the first round here is that he could make this into a shootout. Now, I'm telling you, big punchers always think they're going to win shootouts. I'm sure Errol Spence, even as he's getting hit in the body, with some big shots. I'm sure Errol Spence thought, hey, I'm the bigger hitter in this fight. I'm just telling you, if you're getting hit with big shots in the first round, long term, that's a problem. Let me say this too. Don't be fooled by this fight. Ocampo showing no lateral movement, right? You look at this fight and you say, wow, how could anybody survive Errol Spence? for a number of rounds. Well, let me just say, the job of surviving Errol Spence is made more difficult when you're not even moving laterally. In other words, Ocampo is front to back, right? He's not circling Errol Spence. So, I know Spence is calling out Keith Thurman. Of course he is. Who doesn't want to fight a guy coming off injury who has a share of the title? Right? Who's an unbeaten fighter with a high profile? Right? You know, I'm just wondering what other fighter coming off injury who hasn't fought in several rounds Errol Spence wants to fight. Right? My point to you is against a technical fighter like a Terrence Crawford, 
First off, Spence better tighten up his defense. You're not going to be able to stand there in the first round and think it's no big deal that you're getting hit with multiple power shots. Right? Second, let's face it. Spence is going to have a much harder time finding Terrence Crawford than he is uh, Ocampo in this fight. Right? Because Crawford's going to be moving laterally. It's not going to be as simple as coming forward and finding the guy. Third, let me just say this, and I don't say it lightly. One of the things both Crawford and Mayweather, right, and I'll mention Mayweather because he's a paragon. He's a guy who you want to look at to see how the sport should be, right? Both of these guys, while they weren't the biggest man in the ring, right, both of these guys knew how to get an opponent on their back foot. In other words, Errol Spence wants to come forward. His punches aren't the shortest punches you've seen, right? He's a hooker, right? Spence wants to come forward. If you know he wants to come forward, and if you know he's going to look for your body, why wouldn't you bend at the waist? In other words, make your body hard to find. Why wouldn't you have him literally walk into a shoulder, as I've said, the Floyd Mayweather-Shane Mosley fight? Right? Mosley hurts Mayweather. Mayweather wisely, as he's hurt, as his knees buckle, Mayweather doesn't back up. Because Mayweather knows if he backs up against a slugger like Shane Mosley when he's hurt, Mosley's going to get a chance to extend his arms. It's going to get a chance to walk him down. So Mayweather, even as he's getting hit hard, even as he's hurt, Keep Shane Mosley on his shoulder. Now, why can't a Terrence Crawford do that? Let me say this too. A Sean Porter, right? A guy who can fight inside, who can come in low, right? Why wouldn't a Sean Porter be able to jump in and get Errol Spence on his back foot? You've seen Errol Spence destroy Ocampo on his front foot in one round. Have you seen Errol Spence on his back foot? Let me point out, too, the question also applies to Gennady Golovkin. In other words, the highlights are highlights. It's Errol Spence fighting Errol Spence's fight. In boxing, at the championship level, sometimes great fighters are going to have to fight other fights, right? Their opponent's not going to say, hey, I'm not going to have any lateral movement. Even though I've hit you in the body a few times here, I'm not going to have you walk into a shoulder. I'm going to back up and create a cushion where you can hit me. Let me say this, too. What I want people to do. And don't get me wrong, I know these body shots take the wind out of you. I know they hurt you badly. But my goodness, if there ever was a time, ever, to get off the canvas, wasn't it this Errol Spence fight? Folks, there's something like a second left in the round. Right? Understand. Even if Ocampo is uncertain on whether he can continue. If he just gets off the canvas, unless the ref is Richard Steele from the Pernell Whitaker, Julio Cesar Chavez fight years ago, most refs will say, well, hell, it's the end of the round. Right? The guy's going to have a minute to get to his corner and recover let me give him the minute, right? Here, I feel Ocampo is hurt. Sometimes failure helps success. Ocampo is hurt by the fact that this is the first time in his career that he's hit the canvas. So he's hurt on the canvas. You know the rest. He just stays on the canvas. He gets counted out, right? I believe if the guy had... 
been in dire situations in other fights, the guy would have understood. Look, there's one second left in this round. As bad off as I am, if I get to my feet, Errol Spence doesn't have enough time to come across the ring from the neutral corner to hit me again. I'm out of this round. Now, if you're in the corner and you still can't continue, okay, then at that point, you can have a cornerman tell the ref, look, man, it's over, right? You know, we can't continue. But Ocampo stays on the canvas. So all I'm saying is this. Errol Spence won the fight. He did so the way punchers do by KO, right? In the first round, he wins it early. Okay, great. Excellent. But as you watch the film, and I have it in my favorites folder here online, as you watch the film, right, just ask yourself, how many rounds does it take to land a clean body shot against, let's say, a defensively blessed fighter? Let's say Pernell Whitaker. Let's say Floyd Mayweather. Folks, you could go an entire fight without seeing an opponent able to land the kind of body shot that Ocampo lands in the first round, right? I'm telling you, he lands at least, at least three meaty body shots on Errol Spence, right? At least three meaty body shots on Errol Spence, right? To me, that's a problem. In other words, Spence wins this fight on his plan A. What makes legendary fighters is their ability to make changes, to have a plan B, to have a plan C, right? Spence believes he's the top man at 147. When it comes to betting, it's all about the odds. If the public believes that Spence, who, in my opinion, lost the very early rounds against Kell Brook, if the public believes that Spence is unbeatable, you're going to get some great odds, folks. Some great odds when he fights awfully dangerous fighters like a Terrence Crawford and like a Sean Porter. Anyway, that's how I see it. Put another way, and I know some people are upset when I say, hey, Anthony Joshua is a tad overrated right now. Folks, based on the hype I'm hearing, based on the hype I'm reading online, Errol Spence is a tad overrated. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that Joshua or Spence aren't championship level. Doesn't mean that at all. It just means that they're going to be overrepresented in the betting odds. Right? I'm guessing if Spence signed today to fight Terrence Crawford, Spence would be the favorite by a wide margin. A fighter who isn't defensively blessed, whose back foot game is a question mark, who gets hit with some body shots. Let's, let me put it this way. Spence himself isn't moving laterally that much in this one. That's how I saw it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.